Hey guys, it's Vince with Mastering the Method and today we are inside of CloudPrint and I wanted to do a quick video and just give an overview to novice users of the method, especially ones just unpacking their unit, of what they should be looking at immediately once they load CloudPrint on their PC. Um, there are numerous things that, of course, MakerBot explains to do in terms of printing a calibration print to make sure everything is in line, everything looks good. That makes total sense. Um, but most of the time, end users are so excited, they just want to get to printing, and they assume, paying what they paid, that this printer comes out of the box ready to print. Some people, it may, and it may provide a calibration print okay. But when you go to do a normal file, you find you run into issues. So I just want to discuss some settings that I believe is going to give you guys the best chance of success, so to speak, out of the box once, of course, you've calibrated the extruders, performed an assisted leveling, even if the system is new, and then utilize the fact of doing assisted leveling every time you remove the build plate. And the main reason I say that is you will never be able to place that build plate in the exact same position it was after the unit's been calibrated. So just keep that in mind and these are in my eyes best practices but what settings I want you guys to pay attention to is the speed setting set within CloudPrint. Now CloudPrint of course even if you're a new user you're going to notice that when you come over here and you install it it's got balanced and it's got solid settings. Now most of you are not going to have custom print modes like I've said here at least not yet. I'm once again talking about guys who just unpacked their unit and may not have 3D printer experience. If we see balance and we see solid, and you guys come over here to this search bar and you type in speed. And the reason I'm having you type in speed is you can see after I typed in the word speed, all of these settings popped up and you've got a scroll bar. And I want you to look at all of these settings. Okay? These are the settings that are within CloudPrint that end users can manipulate. Okay? But you just bought your printer and most likely you're assuming that from the factory they've already set the best speed for your printer. Well, let's look at this. I'm going to scroll down and I'm just going to arbitrarily select a print setting and we're going to look at print speed for outlines. Okay? We're just going to click on it. Now, this print speed setting is great. You can see here that, once again, if you're new, if you come up here and you leave your cursor inside the box, it's going to give you the definition of what this feature does. And not every feature will have this, meaning MakerBot did not go through and put these definitions on every feature. So learning sometimes is a little more daunting. Anyway, it says adjust extruder 1's movement while printing of the outermost shell. Okay, that makes sense. Now, you can see this is set at 10 millimeters a second. And why I want to highlight this, at 10 millimeters a second, that's substantially fast, guys, because that's almost, what, half an inch a second? That's pretty quick. So you can see here this slider naturally adjusts and lowers these settings. Real simple, that makes total logistical sense. And again, we selected one arbitrary setting. So let's look. This looks like it makes sense. Why not start at the lowest possible setting, and then end users can manipulate this setting based on them doing successful prints and saying let me just tweak where I feel comfortable and to see if the end result is producing you know what we're looking for in terms of geometry in terms of uh, finished diameter all of those normal uh, variables that comes with 3d printing well if we come up here again and we take this and we're going to put in speed once again You'll find you may have to go a little slow because sometimes the cloud print, it takes seconds. We come down here again. I'm going to check another setting arbitrarily. Print speed solid. Click on it. Now, extruder 1's print speed solid. Once again, we've got the definition. Adjust extruder 1 movement while printing solid. This is set at 50 millimeters a second. I'm going to say it again, 50 millimeters a second. Guys, 25.4 millimeters is an inch. You're looking at almost two inches of travel per second. That's extremely fast, especially when your print bed is a little over seven inches. 
I mean, that's ridiculously quick. Why wouldn't they have set this setting at 10 millimeters as well? Or for that matter, all of these settings at 10 millimeters uh, to start with and let end users adjust once they have successful prints. This makes logical sense. But I assure you that as we look at this, we'll do another one. There we go. And we'll just wait and we'll come down. And let's do mini fill sparse. Look at this. Look at how ridiculous this is. 110 millimeters a second. Again, guys, this isn't millimeters a minute. It's millimeters a second. So let's look. 110 divided by 25.4, which is one inch in millimeters. You're basically saying that that extruder head is going to print accurately while extruding filament at 4.33 inches a second. That is ridiculous. And I think starting with speeds at this level are what cause most issues if you guys are not aware of this. Um, again, MakerBot really doesn't disclose any of this. These settings are stock. I have not messed with them. As a matter of fact, balance, it says here settings have been customized. I have not messed with any of these settings in terms of speed. So my suggestion to any new end user is to reference all of the speeds. Once again, I'm going to come up here. And I want to show you how daunting this is because I went through this myself. Okay, I'm going to type in speed. And again, you can see the delay. And if you want to go and reference all the speed settings, I don't know how many there are, guys. I'm being honest with you. But you can see here how tedious this is. This is not really well done in my eyes. Many of you are going to look at this and be like, this is kind of crazy. I have to go in and adjust all these speeds because they're not set at the factory for optimal performance. If you just do a math calculation on what I just showed you, it doesn't make sense that you would try to print at that fast a speed. Now, I want you to keep in mind, this is the balance settings that came with this software. So you would assume MakerBot had already tested these settings prior to shipping the units, right? That's what I did. That's not the case, guys, because I can tell you I did not get successful prints right off the bat because of this. I dropped the speeds down to 10 millimeters a second on all of these settings, and then I was able to work from a ground-up level, so to speak, and see how the printer performed. Okay, because again, we are dealing with millimeters a second. Now, once again, I want to just show you something in comparison because I think it's worthwhile to do, and I am not uh, affiliated with Simplify in any way, shape, or form. I'm just going to show you the difference and why I use it now and why I'm happy I bought it. I'm going to come over here to Simplify, and I've already opened it. And again, I've opened up the process settings, and I'm under Speeds tab. And I just did a video showing that my default printing speed I've increased to 2,500 millimeters a minute. And once again, I'm saying it in the way that I feel this should be for speed settings is millimeters a minute. When you look at cloud print, it's set at millimeters a second. Now, you'll look down here under time estimation for XY acceleration, Z acceleration, and extruder acceleration, and these are in millimeters a second. Why? Because these are acceleration ratings, guys. So speed at that point, you're looking to get up to speed. So therefore, millimeters a second is more applicable. Millimeters a minute is going to provide the most stable print. Why? Because those speeds are going to be much lower. Now, I want to show you something else. And most of you are looking at this and saying, man, this is pretty cool. If this is all I have to adjust under speeds, Inside of Simplify, this is a dramatic difference from all those settings that I just looked at in cloud print. And you would be absolutely right. And believe you me, that's exactly what I saw. Being I didn't have experience with this printer, I looked at this and I said, wow, this is completely logical. So the default printing speed maximum I just set on my last uh, video is at 2,500 millimeters a minute. However, 
when I first got the software, it was set at 1800 millimeters a minute, and that's just the stock speed. But if you look here at outer perimeter speed, inner perimeter speed, top layer speed, solid infill speed, sparse support speed, and dense support speed, they're all percentages that are based on this maximum of the default printing speed. That's all you need to know. It's that simple. So if you want to adjust your percentage on your outer perimeter speed, you would just click the up or down and you're good. But I say this, like many of you would say, hey, I want to try the print and see how it works with default settings. Well, guess what? That's exactly what I said. And magically, at the 1800 millimeters a minute stock speed that the software came preloaded with, I had magic. The printer worked flawlessly. And now I bumped it up to 2500 millimeters a minute. So without me saying anything, because I don't think I have to, if you look at this screen in comparison to what we just saw here under speed settings, which is cleaner, guys? Which looks like it makes more logical sense and which looks like it will be easier to work with? That's all I say. Because I look at this and as many of you, especially if you're just getting your printer out of the box, this is not something that I would even remotely want to mess with, especially if you're just getting started in the sense that you're excited to get the printer set up, you've already run all the calibrations, everything looks good, and then you load a file only to see that these speeds are all over the place. It doesn't make sense. So again, if you're going to stay with cloud print, make sure you come into your speed settings and adjust them all accordingly to what should be a realistic speed. If you don't know a speed, my recommendation, go online and you can figure out what best speeds are acclimated to filaments. MakerBot doesn't really disclose that information, unfortunately, and hopefully they'll pick up the ball where they dropped it now that they've merged with Ultimaker and do some videos that are more based on support. Um, because I think it would help many of us, or better yet, update cloud print to where the speed settings are already configured at the lowest possible settings and let end users adjust them based on how their print quality is. That would transform, I feel, a lot of end users' experience. But again, looking at the two, these are the settings that you have for speed. Like I said, most of these you never adjust. I never adjusted any time estimation. I never adjusted any outer perimeter speeds. From the outer perimeter speed to the dense support speed percentages, I've never touched any of those. The XY travel speed was all I made a slight manipulation on, and I bumped it up to 3,700 millimeters a minute, flawless. And again, you guys can see the video, and you can see a direct comparison, and that's why I'm adamant about if you're going to start out and you want to start on the right foot, at least start with software set at the correct speed. So I hope this video will help many of you getting started on the right foot. And remember, follow the calibration process to the T. And then, of course, do your purging, do your calibration print. But before you print, check your speeds. So again, guys, I hope that this video helps all my guys just getting started on their method journey. I thank you all for your support. If you like the video, please definitely leave a like and a comment. It certainly helps the channel. Thank you all for your support. Take care.